I was really keen to find out, I'd heard so much about how Paris have been doing a fabulous job with participatory budgeting and um, across Europe they were the ones who were doing it on such a huge scale. Um, so I was fascinated to see how they made it work, um, but more specifically to look at how they engaged some of the more marginalised communities, um, how they were maybe measuring the success, how what the impacts were, um, and obviously some of the technology behind doing something across such a huge city like Paris. My expectation was to see what worked in Paris and, and how could that be perhaps lifted and used in Scotland as such, the use in Fife. Was there some comparisons that we did in Paris that we could say that would work in Fife? So I think it was about compare and contrast for me. And I think that the aim of this trip was that people came to Paris and learnt what Paris had done. There's a lot of similarities between uh, Paris and, and Glasgow because it was Glasgow that chose the site. Uh, uh, and we just thought it was an ideal opportunity for people to learn from a, a, a city that's gone further down the road than we have so far. Yes, we wanted to know at scale how they delivered at scale in terms of the 100 million, how did they structure their departments around that and how that worked in terms of capacity. The first is the submission period. So in 2017 it will go from 21st of January to 21st of February. Then uh, from March to May, we do two things, two different things. Mm -hmm. The first one is that uh, we analyze projects. Are they meeting our criteria and are they feasible? Uh, and the second thing is we are co-building projects. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, in 2016, we got 3,232 uh, 30, projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was much, uh, way too much, uh, so we tried to mm -hmm. put them together on a topic basis or on a geographic basis mm -hmm. so that we can decrease the number and have a voting uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and make it easy to vote. Because I thought the input that Adi gave, it gave that overview, it gave the kind of con the context to it, some of the, th the, the, the kind of thinking behind it and the overview of the application. The other meetings then added to that and you could get a bit more from it or you could, you could use the information you got at the beginning to ask more in-depth questions. But I felt that that was really, really useful in being able to provide that oversight. Um, PB in Paris is based around the capital budget. So obviously we have a capital programme and we're not currently using PB um, in relation to that. Um, and I think the, the other thing is around the incentives for people to get involved in PB. So you can see it's very attractive for the R&D smalls that they could bring in an additional two euros for every euro of, of budget. Um, so I, f I found that, that interesting as a, as a lever and as an incentive to, um, to make the links between strategic and uh, local level. I think participatory budgeting needs political will and I think that was just reaffirmed for me when I was in Paris. I could see the districts where it worked well was because there was good political will to make it happen and I could see the districts where it didn't work well it was because maybe the local mayor was interested or so forth. Um, that's interesting because I think about Fife would that work in the same way that in seven areas it might work well if you've got local politicians interested but if they're not would they just let it drop for something else. So a lot to reflect on there I think. And I'm not sure if Paris started small, I think they went for a big bang and couldn't believe that they did all that in three months. I, um, so, yeah, it was very useful. And then if you could click on one, uh, on one project, a specific project, then you have, here you have the intern's comments. Mm -hmm. So everything in the direction, who's uh, leading the project is putting on for us to see and for other directions to see. So everyone is working on the same tool and it's a way to communicate also. Mm -hmm. So that uh, every time you change something about the project, everyone, anyone changes something, they put it on here 
so that there is no errors. I'm going through quite a significant journey, the front end, the back end, also about the number of votes that take place, the kind of interface between the smartphones, the iPads, and the fact that you've got a significant variation between the number of votes that take place through the digitisation, the paper vote, and the kind of mobile aspect of it as well. I'm quite keen to see more digitisation of it in, in Scotland, and I think I'll take a lot back from that. I think it's remarkable that they were able to respond to the political will to turn it around really quickly. So to be able to create um, a, a platform within three months is fantastic. Um, I think probably the critical thing I've learned about that though is pace. Um, and I think whilst it's great they were able to, to respond to the political demand, I think there are some challenges. And um, for me, I, I think some of the questions that we were asking about some of the more marginalised communities um, and areas of deprivation, they weren't able to answer um, because the technology didn't allow them to scrutinise on that level. for the 2016 FAE round mm -hmm. and this is the support, so these are the supports that were put out for people. So those were actually put forward by the administration but they were the result of talking to local groups and so on. For example, mm -hmm. investing in sp sporting facilities was put forward by a voluntary organisation working with young people who said that we have no sporting facilities. So it was a partnership. These, these themes uh, were actually arrived at, not simply by the administration saying, this is what we want you to talk about. It was fabulous for me to see that they also have local development officers that they've deployed to areas that maybe have been less involved in the past um, and, and voices less heard. So that's something that we're really keen to develop across Fife. They've set up, they've, gone, they've invested a lot of money and stuff. It's not just being done on a shoestring, that there's real investment in developing uh, a workforce behind them and bringing the workforce with them. tous les 15 jours. Celui-ci était un peu particulier parce qu'on avait une présentation de l'étude de la pure très intéressante sur l'analyse des projets déposés en 2015 pour les Parisiens et ce qu'ils nous apprennent sur ce que veulent en fait les Parisiens. Et on a pu voir avec eux du coup les travaux complémentaires qu'on aimerait pour 2016 sur le focus particulier qu'on a fait sur les quartiers populaires. Ça nous a après permis de préparer la phase d'idéation car le budget participatif est un exercice annuel qui revient très vite et du coup euh, on réouvre déjà la plateforme dans quelques semaines et donc ce copil nous a aussi permis de refaire le point sur l'événement de lancement rapidement sur le site et un petit peu sur les outils de communication. In Glasgow City Council Community Planning Partnership we don't have a, a steering committee at a strategic level such as is Paris. What we do have is a small working group at officer level and that involves the officers who are involved in coordinating and we come together fortnightly but we are officers. At a local level we have steering committees that involve neighbourhood community councils and involve officers and partner organisations. So there are small steering committees and most, some of the wards, not all of them, some of the wards have a steering committee that brings together the community council. We don't often get that many opportunities to go and really explore somewhere that has created something different and to have conversations about it and to see people's structures. And I suppose Paris was interesting in the fact that the structure in Paris, albeit the fact that it's much larger, has got a lot of similarities to Glasgow in terms of its kind of social, the social aspects of it, but also the kind of infrastructure of the breakdown of areas and those kind of things. So it was quite interesting for me to see some of how that would work. I think one of the things that has struck me that's different from the Scottish model is that the Scottish model isn't about the public deciding how services should deliver their budgets. It's, it's about a, a different way of working of uh, services, working with and for communities. So I would, in the Scottish model, I would expect um, citizens to be much more involved in 
with implementation and, and perhaps even the delivery that it's not necessarily that it's automatically there would be the council that would, would de deliver the local solution that's needed. It's very well structured, um, very well organised. I've certainly learnt a lot from uh, the, the trip um, and I, I think I'll be taking a lot back um, in terms of you know taking it back and having these discussions at a political level and within the kind of organisation within the City Council as well about what can be achieved and just the lessons learned as well. Um, look, the lessons Paris learned, so it's a kind of a, a situation where you potentially won't do those, um, you know, the, the issues that may be in the challenges that they faced and the evolution that they've gone through. Um, it was useful to have um, Rosemary tr to translate. I think we've had a good mix uh, across um, meetings where um, we've been able to. You know, we've had ones that have been wholly in English, we've had a steering group meeting that was mainly in French, we've had other ones sort of in between. Um, I, I did some translation of some of the background documentation before we came so that we did, so we were familiar with some of the terminology and language used also. But I think one of the key things is that sometimes we need to make sure that participatory budgeting doesn't become an end in itself, but that we look for what is the purpose of participatory budgeting. Is it about empowering individuals, which is the ultimate? Is that the ultimate aim through a uh, uh, greater uh, 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 democratic participation, or is it about changing the way we deliver our services? So it's good to know and be able to measure yourself against another local authority. So we could see that Fife is just about to mainstream. They've been doing their small grant stuff, only in a smaller scale, but they're just obviously a very similar place to us, which was really, really comforting, because sometimes you need a measure and a barometer to know where you're at and to compare yourself against, because sometimes you're wondering if you're going in the right direction. And I'm hoping sincerely that it doesn't just stop here, that, um, that Glasgow Fife, you know, that we have a stronger connection because we've got people willing to do PB. So to me, that is the difference that it's made, is it's brought people together with a common purpose who are keen, enthusiastic and have a belief that this could work. I think they need to write a blog on their experiences and uh, reflect in that initial way. I think they, they need to talk to each other and um, also talk to Paris. Uh, what works Scotland here has worked as a as a as a facilitator, if you like. We've we've lit the blue touch paper to allow Glasgow and Fife to take PB forward, uh, learning from the Paris model, not replicating it, but learning from it. And I think they need to do that together. And and they've got a great opportunity here to uh, build and develop uh, the, from the contacts that they've made in Paris over the last few days.